Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Now, for the rest of the hour, uh, we're talking to Sheriff Richard Mack. Last time I saw him uh, was uh, late last year to a packed house that we spoke to uh, out uh, in uh, Santa Cruz, California. Uh, former sheriff of uh, Graham County, Arizona, longtime crusader for freedom of individual rights. In 94, he filed a lawsuit challenging the Brady Bill to stop the federal government from forcing another undue mandate down our throats, and he won. Uh, he lectures and gives seminars on constitutional issues relating to gun control, law enforcement, states' rights, um, the farce otherwise known as the drug war, and the oath of office, Sheriff Mack.com. Sheriff Richard Mack, great to have you here in studio with us. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, I guess you know now I'm a Texan, fellow Texan here. But I want to make sure that everybody knows I'm a Alamo Texan. I really believe in freedom. I believe in standing up for freedom. And uh, these other Texans that continue to say they're Texans and yet they back down from threats for the federal government. Uh, even uh, uh, the state congressman and state rep uh, Dan Petrick said, hey, if you tell us to back down, especially the federal government, that makes us even all the stronger. And that's really what Texas is about to me. Texas independence and the, Al the spirit of the Alamo and remember the Alamo. That's Yeah, I'm, I'm not knocking it. folks moving to New Hampshire to have their free state project, <laughs> but give me a break, folks. Austin, yeah. Austin uh, is, is in, in, you know, the media says Austin's this socialist paradise. No, there's a tiny group for at least 20 years with a mm -hmm. fraudulent um, election machines right. robbing everybody here in Austin, but the people of Austin are great folks. Yeah, yeah, and this is a great state. I love it, and uh, my wife and I are really glad to be here. We live in Fredericksburg, which is a great town, and uh, the Patriots of Gillespie County, uh, got me there, and I work with them, and uh, I couldn't be uh, happier about it and happy to be here with, in your studio. This is a great setup you got here. The word uh, is you're building yeah. up to what, run for a sheriff out there? Uh, that is the rumor, but uh, it's not the truth. It's not. I, I'm, I'm too busy doing what I'm doing. Uh, Absolutely. I, you're, I mean, you're an activist all over the country. All over the country. I just got back from Indiana, uh, then... Uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I was very active working with some sheriffs there. They were having their convention at the same place I was speaking. Uh, there's some good sheriffs out there, too. And um, and then I just finished in uh, Mount Rushmore in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, and we did Sioux Falls. Then I got home, and then my wife's actually going with me on my trip coming up because we're going to spend a few days in Florida because we're doing some great events there. And I have to tell you, uh, I'm speaking at the uh, what TSA rally in Florida uh, in front of the sheriff's convention to let the know, let the sheriffs know that we want them to investigate uh, TSA groping and sexual assaults. Well, I mean, if an Austin right. cop goes in the airport and sticks his hands on a woman's breast or genitals, he's going to go, he's going to be charged. Of course. Uh, why can the TSA do it? Uh, they should. And uh, the Libertarian Party under the leadership of Adrian Wiley have actually issued a request publicly a press release and an official request of all sheriffs to investigate the TSA and take action, uh, uh, including arrests, if the TSA continues to do this kind of crap. And I'm actually speaking at that rally to let them know this is at least one sheriff here that agrees. No exemption for federal employees. No exception. Well, no I exemption. mean, the FBI can't stick their hands down your pants. I mean, they go in the pants. Yeah. FBI can't put you in a microwave oven. This is just a total uh, federal power grab. I want to get into... Well, I want to say one other thing that you mentioned already. You said this was an arrest situation. I have to tell you, Alex, that the groping and... Or, or the, let me just call it what it is. The frisking, quote, the frisking that happens there is exactly the same as when you arrest somebody. Except it gets a little bit... Because I've been through it. I've asked them. I said, I'm not taking the picture. Uh, frisk me, whatever you want to do. I'm not taking your picture because I fly all the time. I don't drive to those, these places I go. I, I fly. And so I wanted to see it. And I said, you know what? I spent 20 years in law enforcement. That's the exact same frisking, except you, you do too much in the crotch. Um, that happens to someone who's, who's arrested. So it gives a lot of credence to what you said, that it is an arrest situation. They are being treated exactly 
Everyone that goes through TSA is treated exactly as if they were under arrest. Or somebody going into Abu Ghraib, and that's where the scanners and all of this even worse uh, got developed. The Pentagon intends this for the streets of America. Now, there's so many issues I want to get in with, uh, mm. uh, uh, get into with you, Sheriff Mack. But first off, just because we ended the last hour with this, what is your take on what's happening in courtside? Well, I, I need to tell you, uh, you mentioned uh, Oath Keepers earlier uh, and how, you know, a lot of government officials are getting really weary of Oath Keepers and me because we're out here saying that, you know, we should follow the Constitution. Uh, you took an oath and you should keep it. Uh, Stuart Rhodes has been asked to be a lawyer down there uh, and help, uh, I believe, Mayor Foster and Jennifer Jones. I know he's working with Jennifer Jones. I thought it was the mayor also. But anyway, Stuart Rhodes is their lawyer. And uh, he's uh, hopefully going to have a lot to report on that. Uh, the, the bottom line with Quartzsite is uh, I, I think it, it is a, a, a typical indication and typical example of government run amok. It's a small area. It's a small town. Uh, and it shows a chief of police who absolutely thinks he's king and can do whatever he wants. And how is it that a mayor is fired who's elected by the people there? Uh, if the people want him removed, they can do it. But uh, for him to be removed in this Gestapo-type fashion is absolutely deplorable. Well, the truth is uh, he's very popular, and it's because of reported corruption that that's why they're acting so... He's been fighting it. Yeah, he's been fighting and standing against the corruption. What would yeah. you do if you were the sheriff in that county? Because the sheriff is empowered by the state constitution. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the, the, the cities are under that in constitutional power because they're a incorporated creation mm -hmm. of the people. I mean, is it the governor, the state police? Uh, what would you do if you were the sheriff and the police are now arresting people for videotaping uh, the city council building or? You know, as sheriff, and I've certainly thought of this scenario before, uh, and Certainly, this would be one of the worst case scenarios that a sheriff would want to have to address. But he has to. He is the ultimate uh, constitutional authority there. It's his, it's his uh, jurisdiction. I mean, it is. And I'm not sure which county court site is in. Somebody's going to have to fill me in on that. I, I'm not sure. I know that they're on the way west side, so it could be La Paz County or maybe even Yuma County. I'm not sure which one they're in. I think um, it's Yuma. but it, it, Regardless of that, the, the county sheriff should be stepping in at this point. It's gotten too, way too out of control, and there's far too many uh, constitutional violations. And I fear that if he doesn't, what county? It's La Paz County. Okay, I thought it was La Paz. Um, and La Paz is the newest county also in the state, but it's a very small county, very small area. And the sheriff there should actually, you know, take the bull by the horn and make sure that Mayor Foster's prediction does not come true. Somebody needs to come in there and settle this down before violence does happen. And somebody needs to put that chief of police in, in place. And somebody, an independent investigation needs to take place of that chief and that police. Why do you think the state for a month has been sitting on its hands? Because uh, they're wimpy and uh, they're go-along government. Uh, let me tell anybody right now that might have any mistaken notion that uh, Governor Jan Brewer is nothing but a rhino. She is nothing but a rhino. She's a go-along person, uh, her attack on the illegal alien problem notwithstanding. She's a politician. And, and, and you were a sheriff in Arizona. I know her very well, yes. And you know her very well. And we can talk about the border situation as well. I want to get into the militarization of police, the bankruptcy of America. They admit they're getting U.S. troops ready to go up against citizens. What should sheriffs do when all this comes down? And your phone calls, military and police. We're going to get into Fast and Furious, new information on that. Government caught red-handed shipping the guns of Mexico and Miami. I mean, they're controlling the gangs that they want to knock out the other drug gangs. Uh, we're going to get in uh, to the militarization of police and then your phone calls. Uh, and I'm feeling a little bit of overdrive come on today, but I've, I've got to not do overdrive today because we're doing the special TV report. You know, I should have thought about having you here tonight for the report. Uh, but uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm, we'll find out after the show. But uh, Sheriff Richard Max, our guest, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Let's get into militarization of police. Every week now, articles come in, usually from the military base itself. And uh, Homestead Air Force Base in Florida is announcing they're now patrolling the town and they're making arrests uh, at the Circle K and uh, other events. And uh, they could argue, well, it's a citizen's arrest, same power we have, but it's active duty military doing this. 
Uh, Sheriff Mack, what's that really uh, about? Well, it's happening all across the country. I don't care where you go, and you can see it on YouTube almost every day where another cop is uh, out of control. W what these cops are being trained to do, in fact, there was one on YouTube uh, I just saw somebody just sent to me and asked me to look at it and give them uh, some advice. Uh, the guy just is seeing a, some cops go after a lady on a traffic stop, and it looked like they were way out of line, you know, handcuffing her and all this stuff. And he calls them from his garage, from on his property, he yells out at the cop, you're a Nazi. And they come and arrest him in his garage. They come and arrest him on his property and arrest him. Yeah, you've seen it. And I am appalled at stuff like this. Well, what about well, when they find a homeless guy who doesn't even resist, they beat him for five minutes and he dies, right. and the police say, that's, that's a good killing. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. not about showing off that you're macho and can kill, you know, a schizophrenic homeless person. Right. And then we have the Jose Garena shooting in Tucson, which I, uh, with Oath Keepers, went down to that memorial service. And it, it's just over and over and over. And what has happened is we have a SWAT team mentality. And in the book I'm writing right now, uh, I have the chapter dedicated to this, and it says, don't SWAT me, bro. Remember the guy that was yelling, don't tase me, bro? Uh, at some, you know, I, I can't remember the, uni oh, University of Florida. No, John Kerry's yeah. like, let him finish yeah. his question. And the cops go, no. Yeah. The guy's going, I'm not resisting, and they just shock him. Right. Exactly, that guy. I've got his name and everything. It's in my book, um, uh, and it's just... It I'm, reminds me of deer hunters that get buck fever when a big buck finally yeah. comes out, or <laughs> yeah. they shoot a cow because they want to kill something. It does. And it's like, well, I'm going to go ahead and taser you because I want the... Well, well, that shooting incident in Tucson of Jose Garena shows an, an officer, if you look at the tape, the, the SWAT team's own tape, there's three officers at the threshold, at the door. And they push in the door, and immediately they start shooting. You know, nothing about drop the gun or put it down. We're the cops. Put it down. You got it. You, you know, we got you. Then there's a, an officer of the SWAT team about 10 feet behind him. And as soon as the shooting starts, he rushes to the door, has his gun drawn, puts it over the shoulder of another officer, and is now having the muzzle blast. And he starts firing, empties his gun. And fires right next to one of the other officers' face, where the muzzle blast is in this guy's face. And he was wanting to get some. Yeah, he wanted to be part. He didn't want to be left out of the dance. And that's exactly he, he wanted, wanted another some. kill. And this is the mentality that I worry about. Well, that's and why you don't want militarized police, exactly. because military kills people and breaks things. Exactly. And that's what we've done with the SWAT teams all across this country. We have trained these guys that you go home, that you go home to, um, is the most important thing at night. And instead of, you know what, it may be the worst thing we could do is shooting an innocent person. Because that's going to turn the population against them. We're already seeing it starting where citizens are starting to shoot first, ask questions later. They're actually escalating it into a war. Right, because of the mentality and what the cops are doing. First of all, there should have never been a SWAT team at the Jose Garena home. If you want to do serve a warrant on this guy, stop him on the way home. Have him stay there, inform him that he's not allowed to use his phone, take his cell phone away from him, inform him that there's going to be a search warrant served at his house, ask him if there's anything that they need to be aware of in that home, and say, is your wife armed? Is she blah, blah, blah? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, you're obviously a long-time law enforcement sheriff, peace officer. 20 officers, years. So 20 you years. know all this, but just yeah. studying criminology, in the old days, you always stopped somebody when they were leaving home because that was the safe way. Safe way. You don't go do an armed assault yeah. on a house. Exactly. Exactly. Well, why don't they do the old-fashioned thing? Because these guys are trained to be Mr. Macho militarization, and they're not trained in this stuff. They're not trained uh, to proceed in logical means. And it really has me completely baffled why the leadership, the sheriffs, and you know that's what I'm doing nationwide. I'm reaching out to sheriffs, and I believe that we can change this and, and stop it. But if we do, it's going to be sheriff by sheriff. All right, let's continue with that and get into Fast and Furious. But just the common sense of that, if you really think somebody's doing something legal in a house, you know when they're going to work. Right. You just park down the street and you follow them to, you pull them over, nothing happens. Simple. Instead of charging a house. Or taking him down at work. Well, that's like David Koresh, who went into town every day and had a business. Not at all. They wanted the confrontation. Yes, exactly. They wanted the big macho shootout, and they got it. yourselves what are you doing in this time of great challenge what are you doing to unlock minds